So, hello everybody and welcome to Joint Venture Europe to our monthly webinar. Today we have the 4th of September 2014 and I am super excited this month um, because exactly 40 years ago this month I was born and I'm going to be celebrating my upcoming 40th birthday on the 27th of September like all month long. And um, we have all ladies in the group and I don't know how you guys feel about your age but I feel like Finally, my, my, my number is, is representing my wisdom, so I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Welcome, all of you. I'm so excited to see all of you here tonight. Um, we've got some great things in store for you, and um, yeah, I think, I think you're going to be excited to hear about the uh, joint venture pitch tonight and the two flirts that we have. Um, Julia's ready. She just turned 40 this year, too. Thank you for sharing that, Julia. Happy 40th. I remember that wasn't very long ago. It was like a month ago, right? It's a great, it's a great number to have. So, let's jump into um, Joint Venture Europe. We know um, all of us here. Um, I can only see one new person, but um, for the new people on board, we will let you know after the main part of the webinar what this group is all about. So, stay on board. I will let you know toward the end um, when it's time to for the new members to stay. And we're going to show you what this group is all about. But to sum it up in one motto, it's all about teamwork makes the dream work. We're all trying to get our messages and our programs out into the world and uh, reach the people that we want to serve. And we're trying to grow our businesses. And this group is to help you guys to come together and, and help each other out. And we use the analogy of the bumblebee as um, the small little guy who makes a big impact on the world when, when he gets together with his friends. Um, so that's why we've got it in the logo, which is a new development um, that we're loving. My name is Shelia Stevens. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the virtual coach from ShaliaStevens.com, where we show experts and teams how to bring their expertise online and reach more people. Um, I'm a co-founder of Joint Venture Europe uh, along with Susanna Rohr. Susanna Rohr is currently on vacation in Croatia. She just posted some beautiful pictures today, so she won't be joining us this evening. But um, Susanna, we do greet you um, to Croatia and when you look at the recording. So hello to Susanna. Today's agenda is the agenda from the last monthly webinar because they're all built the same way. So we're going to start with the JV Europe News. Um, we're going to go on to the pitch of the month. That's anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to have two members who present themselves in our so-called member flirt. Uh, that's going to be um, exciting tonight. We've got Olga and Katrin doing that. Louise is going to be doing the pitch of the month. Then we're going to move from there on to JV School. Tonight I'm going to share with you all um, a couple of really simple ideas of um, JV partnerships that you could be thinking about. And I'm also going to address um, a question that I got from Mary Claire Hamas about what do I do as a little fish to get a big fish um, in, in my bed. <laughs> Sounds very, very um, seductive, but um, you, know, you know what I mean, right? You want to get that big fish on board uh, who has a large list and has a greater reach than yourself. And um, I'm going give, to give you some direction around that and also some resources. And then we're going to go after JV School on to the area of feedback, ideas, and support, and just hear um, what you guys have to say. Um, but please do um, clink, clink in any time during the webinar. You can raise your hand with a little symbol. Raise your hand. Let's test that out right now. If you guys can hear me very clearly, um, go ahead and raise your hand so I can see that everyone has a good quality. Uh, very good. Whoops, I went on to the next slide. OK, that's looking good. OK, you can take your hands down now. Oh, we've got lots of people coming. OK, good. Um, and then, as I said before, at the end of the webinar, we're going to go into the section for new members and give you guys some information about this group. So what is the JV um, news of this month? Well, uh, surprisingly, it's the same m news of last month, which is we're still trying to grow this group, guys, because you know, if we go back to the analogy of the, of the bee, it's about the strength in numbers. And especially we want to reach a point um, sometime that we have you know, enough members from each country in Europe that we're going to be able to develop local chapters. For those of you who want to only work in your local language and still have um, a cross-connected um, international kind of thing going on for those of you who want to um, yeah, reach international audiences and maybe um, other languages such as English. 
So new members are wanted. Please spread the word. You um, can think of anybody who you think would uh, benefit from this group. Please do um, invite them to connect with me on Facebook. Send me a friend invite and uh, let me know that you sent them my way, and I will be happy to um, let them through the door to our Facebook group where the majority of our action uh, takes place. So just um, a reminder to let's keep growing. All right, so now we're going to go on to our JV pitch of the month. In this segment, for those of you who are new and don't know, um, we speak with one member of the group who is working on a project, who has an idea for a joint venture partnership and wants to talk with you guys about it. And last month we talked with um, Heather Hansen about her JV idea, and that went totally crazy viral. She got all kinds of um, new JV partners on board, including myself and Olga and some other members of the group. And she was able to get 1,500 people, um, that was at least the stand yesterday, onto her new program, sign up for the videos, um, to watch the video series. So um, it makes sense for sure to bring your pitch of the month um, because you know you can really grow, grow your numbers that way. So Louisa, I'm going to turn you on loud. All right. Hi, Louisa. Can you hear me? Hi. So Hi. Great to hear you and see you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. It's a beautiful summer day here in New York, so all is good. I heard yesterday I was speaking with someone in New York that you guys were having a particularly hot day yesterday. And yes. And is that the case for you as well? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's chilly, chilly, chilly here. I can't go outside without my jacket on, and I just turned on my heater for the webinar, so, you know, <laughs> you know how Europe is. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, we didn't really have a summer here. Uh, New York is known for its hot, hot, steamy summers, not this summer, so we're having summer in September. Well, at least it's coming, so that's good. So, yes. So, Luisa, you, you have the floor. I'm going to call up your, your slides. Give me just a second to do that. And um, I'm going to give you the floor. Hang on just a second. There we go. There we go. And you just let me know when you want me to click, and I will click through for you. All right. Sounds good. Looks beautiful. So take it away, Lisa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, thank you for the opportunity to really present um, an up well, an idea for a JV, and I'm really starting this new program called The Language of Success, how your inner game really drives your outer uh, success. And what I mean by inner game is the way that you think, that you believe uh, yourself, who you are in the world, what you deserve, all, all those things. So we can go to the next slide. There we go. So there are, in my, obviously this is all according to me, uh, three specific um, ingredients for this language of success. One is presence, the way that you show up, that charisma when people really resonate with you when they meet you, if online or in person. Uh, the second major components about this language of success. So to get a little bit of an idea about who I am and how I got to this, we can go to the next slide, please. So I, my parents are from Italy, from Napoli, from Naples, and uh, they emigrated to Switzerland, to Bern, and I was born there, and I spent the first few years of my life with my grandmother in Italy, but then did all my schooling in, in Switzerland, and um, I grew up, because of circumstances, really, really shy and introverted, although I was called a professor in my family. Um, I did really well in school. My parents, you know, grew up during the war, so they didn't have a chance to go to school, so education was very important to them. Being the first child, though, I really developed this thing about, you tell me what to do, I'll do it. If you ask me what do you want to do, I 
I had no idea. I couldn't even answer that. Um, so I got very mature, very, very early, uh, placed in a place of leadership in a way um, that has, you know, its pro and cons like anything else in life. Uh, I entered the diplomatic service for Switzerland, so I was uh, posted in China. That's why there's a picture of China there. Um, I was posted in Italy, and originally that's how I came to the United States. Um, and there was always this, I felt like I was living two lives. One was the persona that everybody seemed to uh, notice, you know, oh, you're so grounded, you're so present. I was 22 and representing a country and dealing with ambassadors and heads of states, but nobody would have ever said, oh, you're just a kid. Somehow I came across very mature. However, that's not how I felt. I felt very insecure, very self-conscious, and so on. And that became an issue because I was deeply unhappy, and nobody had any clue about that. So I decided to do something about it and started investigating what that's all about and discovered therapy, psychotherapy here in the United States. Everybody seemed to go to therapy 30 years ago when I first came here. So and it opened up a completely new... Um, venture, adventure for me. Um, I worked as a translator in corporate America, etc., etc., and eventually went to school to become a traditional therapist. And even that wasn't fast enough for me. <laughs> it was beautiful to help people understand what was going on, but it didn't really create the change that I wanted to see for them or help them achieve. So this is about 15, 16 years ago, where I really launched on studying and researching what really creates change, what creates success. And success, you know, meant in any way that you want to see success. And that's how I came to see this um, inner and outer world at peace. And we can go to the next slide, please, Celia. So that. You can still hear me, yes? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. great. Yes, all of a sudden I had I had moments notice here. So the inner <laughs> and the outer uh, world, uh, that's where blocks are really showing up. The outer world is, of course, the way you react. But I'm including here the way you know yourself on a conscious level to be. So I would have said, well, I'm shy. And that's why I'm having a hard time making friends or creating a deep relationship or anything like that. However, the inner world, I had no idea what was even creating that shyness or what was getting in the way, which were belief systems about my worthiness, how worthy I was or not, um, belief systems about other people, that other people aren't safe. I would never have said that. But no, you know, um, uh, if I'm comfortable, I uh, I am friendly, and so on. But the results that I was seeing were certainly not corresponding to the way that I knew myself. And I find that with a lot of people, that they see results and they don't understand where they're coming from. So in order to create change, you know, it's easier to understand what I'm talking about by giving you examples. So if you want to go to the next slide, please? Sure, sure. There you go. One of my private clients, um, Kevin, is a travel agent. And when I met him, he was really struggling. He was struggling with uh, his family. $48,000 a year in New York City is not a lot of money. Um, very self-conscious, um, very had a lot of anxiety, some asthma. And if you asked him what the issue was, he would say, well, you know, I'm really afraid to say no. So anybody who comes along that knows that I'm a travel agent, uh, even if they want the cheapest, and that's not what I want to do, but I can't say no. 
So uh, I am bogged down by all these people who are not the way I want to work, and I get frustrated, but you know, I don't know how to get out, out of it. Once we actually started working uh, a little deeper, what we identified was a, a very deep um, structure of that he would judge himself constantly. He had no clue that he was doing that, and that he so he was not he was never whatever he did it wasn't good enough. So that then translated over years and years and years that he wasn't good enough. You know, that self-worth issue. So if you are not good enough, how can you possibly allow yourself to receive what you want, which would be um, a thriving practice, uh, a loving relationship for him in particular, and so on. We started working, I started working with him now, it's about a year and a half ago, and not, not constantly. You know, he comes, I usually do three months packages with people, and then he goes and you know, lives his life and then he comes back. So he, I just saw him a month ago and uh, he says, oh, I'm so excited. I just did my numbers with my accountant. So just over a year later, his yearly income went from 48000 to 360000 Wow. Um, he was just nominated to a very, very prestigious travel council for luxury travel. And he only works with exclusive clients. I mean, he chooses, he picks and chooses his clients, and the ones that come that are referred, he gives them to other, you know, associates and things like that. And he's happy as a clam, <laughs> for sure. And the the crucial piece was really becoming aware and really working with this pattern. And I'll just share another story with you. Uh, so, can we go to the next slide, please? Here is Kathy. Th these are not real pictures. This is not the real person because you know privacy is important. Um, she's over 50. Actually, she was 55 when I met her. She'd spent uh, 30 years in corporate America in a very prestigious position. Her boss died suddenly. She was his uh, right hand, and she was totally lost. So she took a year off. She traveled. And when I met her, she'd come back to New York saying, I don't know, I don't know who I am. I don't know what the heck I want to do. I am okay financially, but, you know, I don't know if I were to live to 90, if, what, what am I going to do? I need, I want to feel like I'm contributing, but I don't know what to do. So, believe it or not, at the height of the housing bubble here in the United States when real estate crashed, she decided that what she wanted to do was to get into real estate. And we, she had no knowledge of real estate. She started with taking courses and classes and so on. Within a year, she started winning awards for the fastest rising star in an industry that was completely new to her. Um, she really reinvented herself. And nowadays, if you talk to her, it's like, oh my god, I love my life. Everything is so exciting. <laughs> What was going on, this is somebody who's done a lot of work with herself, you know, was very in touch with a lot of things, had done therapy and so on. She was totally lost. And what, what we discovered deep down, uh, and I can share just a little bit of her story with you, she'd been, uh, she started working when she was 14 because the mother abandoned the family and she was the oldest of three children. So she took over cooking and cleaning as well as going to work for her whole family. So she was in this mode and had uh, no idea about receiving, in this case, who she was and what really was important to her deep, deep down. So getting in touch with that piece, and again, not with long therapy because that's not really what I'm interested uh, these days to, to work with people about, but it created a huge transformation in a very, very short time. So. Um, next slide, please. I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm rushing, but I want to give you a condensated version of this. When I'm talking about language of success, the three major keys is really know who you are deeply about your values and what is important to you. Know what you want. Have clarity about that. And the third piece, of course, is then take the steps to create that success. You need that. Um, and 
so what I am looking to joint venture with, and we can we can go to the next slide perhaps, is to really collaborate. Collaborate with somebody who might already be a business coach, a leadership coach, a project manager, somebody who helps people create uh, the third piece, the taking the steps towards creating your success. And uh, wants to help their clients accelerate because if they're not, if people aren't uh, reaching their goals, I can guarantee you there is some subconscious belief system that they're not aware of that is getting in their way, and that's what I love to do. That's what I'm. It's my gift. I can hear people speak, and it, it shows up pretty fast uh, in a conversation, and then we have a process to help them go through it. So to find a way to collaborate to help people create accelerated success. So that is my idea for a joint venture, which I have done um, to some extent, but I'm looking to expand that and. Certainly, in, the, in Europe, where I'm from and where I come, where my whole family still lives, my family here in the United States is my husband, and so I have been doing presentations uh, in various European countries, uh, and of course here in the States and in Japan. So I love the international piece of my business and would like to expand that. So if if you want to have a conversation, if you know that it's something that interests you, so we can go to the next slide, please. Let's schedule a date. <laughs> my name is Louisa. Um, my company name is Inner Contessa. Um, I do work with men, of course, as well. But my branding and my uh, messaging is geared towards women because that's the majority of the people who come to me. And of course, I have a Skype account, and um, I look forward to having dates. I'm excited. Yay, Louisa! Thank you for that. That that was that was really good. And I like from from what I gather, just 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 really quickly to get your target group uh, really clear, because it looked to me like professionals, um, and from the two people you described, they're people who you know had maybe already somewhat of a longer career. So they're not just starting out, but they're more like in, you know, they're maybe mid to late 40s and early 50s. Is that correct? Or, That's or correct. That, okay. Generally okay. speaking, yes. It's uh, people who already are, are in business for themselves. They're not necessarily at the very beginning. Uh, because at the very beginning, what I know, and even from my own business building, you know, you're so overwhelmed with trying to to uh, figure out a lot of, you have a lot of balls in the air. Now, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't help to really streamline that process. That's not exactly, people, this is what happens. We talk to people and say, look, you can accelerate even getting clarity. And they're like, yeah, I hear you, but, but I'm looking at the website, but I'm looking at getting my first clients, but, and so on. So once somebody has already started um, to get things in motion, now they're looking to accelerate things. And those are really my people. Okay, okay. And it could even right. be people on the corporate level that are really looking to, for a promotion or to move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, that the executive, um, executive coaching, um, people who go to an executive coach to say, okay, how do I really uh, bring step up as a leader, how do I step up, you know, in my in my career and are are looking to do that in integrity with themselves in a way that works of course for themselves and the corporation they're working for. Okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense, Louisa. And that and that's really clear to me. Does anybody else have a question for Louisa? Like where was anything unclear to you or you you wanna you wanna clarify something? Let me just have a look over here if anybody Put your hands up, or you can write it in the questions box. Okay. Nope. Very clear. Okay, Louisa. Thank you so much for that pitch. Um, I'm going to be contacting thank you. you. All right. <laughs> look forward to it. Yeah, I look forward to it as well. And uh, guys, those of you who are new, um, you know, it's all about after the webinar going to find a date. So, um, you know, you might want to consider if this uh, speaks to you to make a date with Louisa. Thank you, Louisa. I'm going to put you on mute here. And we're going to move on to Olga. Let me just get Olga. Olga is going to be our first flirt of the night. Olga, you're on loud. 
speaker. I just need to get your screens up here. There we go. Hi, Shiloh. Just checking Hi. that you can hear me. Hello. We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Good evening. How are you, Olga? Hello. Thank you. Well, I'm good. I'm very excited because I'm in the middle of my my lounge, so it's lots of happening. But I'm I'm so thrilled to be talking here today because it's been already so so good. We partnered up with with Heather, and I'm just going to mention it early, uh, later in the in my presentation. So. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Olga Dektariva and I'm um, a founder and um, of the Productivity for Scientists Limited and I am Productivity Mentoring Coach for Scientists. I've been a scientist myself. I have a career over 13 years. I've actually been born in, in a scientific town too, in a, in a family of scientists, but start, uh, starting counting from my master's, that has been 13 years. So I went through um, um, a lot in my career, so this master's, PhD, a couple of postdocs, and my own personal fellowship. I have published 38 research papers. That's what <laughs> counts for scientists. How many papers have you published? So it's 38 and referee journals, including high profile papers. And I had, a, had an international prize and gave a keynote lecture that comes with that. So I've also now three and a half years ago started this business from scratch but based on my passion and it's it's been growing so it's been doubling every year so far so it's been really great I just wanted to really share with you where it all come, came from it's kind of share my my story and my defining moment and how did I ever switch from being a scientist to running this business. Next slide, please. So that, that was me uh, about nine years ago. I already had quite a successful career. That's, that's me next to this flammable thing. Um, I had a postdoc in a prestigious laboratory and already had a couple of high profile papers and started to get invited talks which is really really important for a scientist and other people perceived me as successful as confident but on the inside I felt totally opposite and I struggled with so many things and I just moved away across the ocean from a boyfriend, away from, from my friends, which is very, very common in science. And, and really, it was just so hard to deal with its workload. It was night shifts, uh, endless strings of experiments. So I really felt like it's, it's been getting hard and hard and really weighing on my shoulders. And also my career was going well. I was kind of not sure what was the direction. And also my personal life was a mess. So at some point I just felt like um, I, I hit the uh, rock bottom hard. And I, was, I didn't know where to reach for help. And I was literally ready to give up on everything. And luckily, <laughs> I didn't, and I reached out for for help, and um, was starting to work with my own like issues first, and then really starting to uh, create very positive changes in my life and in my work, and started to work with coaches, and I had my own family, which had a very positive effect on me, and suddenly there was no time to do anything, that's when I started to kind of invent my own productivity techniques and um, using this new insight from very successful people that I, I worked with like through their online programs. And it started to show, people actually started to ask me what's, what's happening. In 2010 I had like my best career in, in, in science when I got my prize and next year I was promoted to the university. So I started to share it in, in the blog and then I had this idea 
start my own business where I would create this coaching programs and really share it with scientists. So, uh, so here below, I just I pull the pictures. Many uh, decide to stay an anonymous, but this this lady shared with me their pictures, so they are open on my website as testimonials. I pull them there just to show you how similar they look. Can you see? <laughs> So these are my these are my 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 ideal clients, and and this lady um, at the bottom right. When we sat next to each other a year ago, I looked at her and I was like, Oh my God, that's me nine years ago. So we both cried. So what I help now scientists is really to overcome overwhelm. Is really get out of that rut when you feel hopeless and when it's uh, just too much and it feels like it's never enough, no matter how much you do. And I just really help them to, to get in touch with the day, to become productive and stay productive for good. They, if they get off track, that they know how to get back on track. And of course, the scientists, what, what matters to them is writing papers, so I help them with that. But it's not only that. So next slide. Oops, there are a couple of pictures missing. I don't know if it's because of the transmission. Oh, they're loading. It's just really to see what, what the really uh, we, we are talking about here. It's not just scientists, really. Um, let's admit that it's like who doesn't experience all these challenges. The list is, the to-do list is too long. You're chasing a carrot. It's never not enough, no matter how much you do, you're running uh, along the corridor, there's so much to do, <laughs> you, you need to keep running, you're putting out fires, you're multitasking, and sometimes you're not doing anything, you're just procrastinating. So that the issue is that, kind of, if you go to my website, that's what I help people with, but it's not just that, we really actually, like, behind this facade, behind that sign, productivity for scientists, we work on much deeper issues. So next slide, please. And it's actually summarized in this picture, which I just found now by, by accident when I was browsing for, for pictures to include in this uh, presentation. This one with Louise Hay popped up, which by accident someone took this picture, you know, no one allowed to take pictures of there, but someone snapped that short, and there was this moment when she's signing this book for me, and I shared with her, um, I help scientists to love themselves. And that was just the next moment she smiled and she told me, it's, oh, it's so beautiful. Uh, so, so that summarized what I actually help the scientists with, it's to love themselves, and that's what we did in this retreat, where all the celebrities came, it's just one of the things I do, it's retreats, but um, because I, I'm a mother of three, I do most of my work online via Skype, one-to-one -one coaching, and recently I'm really trying to ramp it up and do online programs. Uh, so that I can do one too many, and I'm in the middle of such launch in the right now. Next slide, please. Okay, here we go. That's just a couple of words about what's, what's happening right now. So I'm, I'm uh, launching it with a free uh, content first. So I'm offering this the productivity code video series where I am walking them through the system, the seven-step system that I've just created. Thank you, Shaila. <laughs> so we worked on this together because I just couldn't figure out what is my system. So we sat down and I figured out those steps. And I know that some brand designers might, might be looking at it right now, and I feel a bit conscious because I have no branding whatsoever. <laughs> I'm just trying to put the colors together at the moment. But I'm, I'm doing it imperfectly just now because Believe it or not, there is a little bit about saving lives. I have a couple of testimonies, as you know, I said, it was a, a matter of life and death. That's how hopeless uh, they felt, and that was me nine years ago. So I thought, you know, there is, I can't afford to wait. I'm just going to get it out there. So this is what's happening right now, this free video series, and we had so far 140 people signing up and watching it during the past week. 
and it's going to all lead to this new course, the productivity course, the online course for, for scientists. So what I'm looking here at the um, joint venture Europe is really I love to bring resources to scientists. So I already I'm already bringing Heather, who is a clear speech specialist, because I have, we have so many scientists whose English is not first language. So that's going to be like a huge bonus for this program. <laughs> it's it's going to be probably people are just going to sign up for this program because of this bonus, I think. And I'd love to bring many other resources because scientists they're just not taken care of. Uh, so that's where I'm open to um, a discussion and also it, maybe I can be of help to someone as well because I, I'm sitting on this productivity techniques which are good not just for scientists, they can be applied to everyone and I, I hear it again and again, people tell me, but your stuff can be applied to everyone, not just to scientists, but I'm just sticking with scientists for now and maybe I can uh, just serve other people in other different ways. All right, this is all from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olga. I, I love I love the productivity code. You know that I do love it. <laughs> yeah. and I, I, <laughs> I, po I posted it today. So I was just thinking, um, you know, Olga, because um, you know, you were talking about just now, like how Heather got on board your program because you have, you know, scientists are, uh, you know, abroad internationally. They get sent to different places to work on different research projects, and so they are struggling with, uh, you know, global English. That makes total sense. And what came up for me just now was just like you were talking about, you know, I'm a mother of three. Also, my clients have families. Um, you know, how do I get, you know, productive at work, but also have time for my family? So, you know, a, a cooperation partner for you could just as well be someone who um, addresses family issues or um, I'm looking right now at the name of Mary Claire because you know they your scientists need energy to get through their days so it's someone like Mary Claire who's an energy expert so it could be it could be really um, a lot of different joint venture opportunities for a lot of different areas of the scientist's life is that correct yes absolutely Okay. Okay. So you guys, if you um, find interesting um, what Olga had to say, and you think, "Hmm, I think I might have a complimentary a piece for her for list." Olga's got a, a really um, responsive list um, who really c come to everything she does. It's crazy. <laughs> so you might be interested in, in talking with her on your next flirt, flirt in the coming months. Thank you so much, Olga, for presenting that. I'm going to I'm going to put you on mute. And I'm going to switch back over to my presentation because Katrin is going to come and flirt like she means it, and she doesn't. She's going to speak uh, freely without slides, and so I'm just going to put that there so you can see her name. Uh, Katrin, I've unmuted you, so you are on the stage. Oh, hello! Thanks, Talia. Thanks hello. for giving me the opportunity. I'm really excited to be here tonight. We're excited to have you, and the floor is yours. <laughs> well, the floor is mine, and I am a slideless person. That's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> me in a nutshell. Okay, so let's do it. Um, my name is Kath Luthi. Uh, right now, my business is almost 90% German and 10% English, so I do work in both languages. That's down to the fact that I started my business down in Australia about four and a half years ago now, and I've kind of just switched to German in May this year, and it's, um, yeah, um, we've pretty much hit a really good market, a real sweet spot in the market over here. Um, and we got really, really, really busy, and so 90% of my business are now in German, but I still do English work as well. So I am the marketing superheroine at Frauen Business, that's the name of our German business. And what I do is I help women make money in their business, and I know that sounds a bit crude and everything, but I am pretty much your no BS, tell it as it is kind of girl. So. There's, in my opinion, there's enough people out there helping others find their passion and their mission in life. And for me, I've found that my passion is business. I 
love to play the game of business. I find that super exciting. And my mission is to help people build a business that's sustainable, financially, physically, and emotionally. That is absolutely 100% my mission. I've struggled in my business for years, and I have to say I found it extremely frustrating. I'm not a very patient person, and I never thought I would be the kind of person who would say that delayed gratification is something that I just had to learn to appreciate. But um, I struggled for a long time in my business. I created some really amazing turnovers, but um, time after time, the meeting with the accountant came along, and I had to pay no tax at all. And yeah, for somebody like me who is very self-motivated and very driven, that was pretty hard to swallow. So I know what it's like to struggle in your business financially. Um, I always say that uh, if you're in, in business and you're not making any money, it's a really, really expensive hobby to have. It's certainly um, my most expensive hobby to date, and that's not even, I have not even lost any money at all in my business, but I've put so much work in for, for so many years and never got any pay for it. So. I think, you know, it is a pretty expensive hobby to have if you don't make money. So basically that was the state of affairs when I met um, the woman who saved me, I call her now. Her name is Nicola Moraz and if you ever want to meet a kick-ass entrepreneur, well, I can just advise you to go out on Facebook and check her out. She's absolutely amazing and in the year that she mentored me, she made just short of a million bucks. and um, I'm not really that focused on making a million bucks that I said before. Um, I want to maintain a really consistent income and I want to help other people to do the same. But it was pretty inspiring to watch her do this, uh, especially since she went from just making 50,000 bucks the year before to making just short of a million the next year. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, I met her and she basically taught me the way that I do business today and that is really has set me free and it's given me the opportunity to really live the life and the business that I set out to create, a business where I can work from home, I can work in fact anywhere I want to be and I actually it actually works financially as well. So um, that's where I come from. And um, what I really love is marketing. I love marketing and I love teaching people not just to do marketing, but to actually love their marketing too. Because marketing is one of the most essential business skills to have, whether you like it or not. And the fact is that if you hate it, if it makes you feel icky and pushy and salesy, um, and if you just hate your marketing, you always feel like you're on a diet. It's something that you have to do. I believe you have to do it consistently to grow your business consistently. If you don't do it, um, you get on this income roller coaster where you earn a bit of money because you've been out and done some marketing, no matter what that looks like, whether it's networking for you or whether you have ads in magazines or whatever it is that you do. But you do some marketing, you get some clients, you make some money, and then whilst you're working with those clients, you forget about your marketing because you hate it. And then the roller coaster goes down again and your income goes down and that's when your business is getting frustrating again because you know you worry about it, you lie awake at night and you think about how you're going to pay your bills and all that kind of stuff. So if you hate your marketing, you always feel like you're on a diet, you have to get together all your willpower to actually do it and that's never ever going to work for more than a few weeks or a few months at a time and then you're going to drop it. The fact is that marketing has such a bad Rap. But um, what the fact that we ignore is that marketing is actually totally changed. It's not a one-way um, message anymore. It's not people just you know vomiting their marketing message over you and you just feel cringy and horrible. Marketing is a conversation today, so you can 
only be successful in your very small business if you start a conversation with people, with not just with your potential customer, but just like here, you have conversations with people. You talk to people about what it is that you do. You talk to people about their problems, no matter whether you can solve them or not. You become a person who connects other people and helps solving problems, no matter whether you're doing that yourself or you're helping people find other people to help you solve those problems. So that's what marketing is all about, to communicate with people in a way that inspires them and that inspires them to hopefully work with you eventually. And um, I just love to quote this thing that one of my clients said to me um, a few months ago because I thought that really, I couldn't have said it any better. And she said, marketing, and I learned that from you and your courage and your inspired, lovable way to work is not a necessary evil. On the contrary, it can be fun. And it doesn't have to mean selling yourself, but celebrating your own uniqueness invites others to do the same. And that, to me, is so close to this amazing Marianne Williamson quote that we all know, shine your light and give others the permission to do the same. That's what it's about today. And once you understand that, your marketing is going to become so much easier and so much more fun and your business is going to become so much more exciting overall. So, um, I love to try new things and this is something I'm going to talk to you a little bit about in just a minute. Um, and I really love to see results. That's what really drives me in my business. And when I don't get results, I become like this pit bull, you know, I bite myself into the problem and I go at it until I solve it. And um, <laughs> there's um, somebody I would love to introduce to everyone. His name's Evan Pagan, and some of you might know him. Um, his podcast is, to me, the world's best podcast about business um, that is around right now. And he says, being an entrepreneur means that you're a person who accepts that most things don't work and to keep finding out what will. And that's what successful marketing is all about, testing and tweaking, and then rinse, lather, and repeat. And that's what I do all the day long, and I love it. So um, I'd like to give you a couple of examples of the kind of results that I get in my business. Um, like I said before, we started in Germany um, in around the mid of May, and our online program, the Academy, started exactly 12 weeks ago because it's coming to an end right now. Um, eight weeks into our program, one of our clients went from making like 100 bucks a month to having a 1,200 and a 1,300 euro a day in the space of two weeks. So, I mean, to say she, um, well, she she made 10,000% of what she used to make, you know, but um, obviously when you start small, um, you can't really say she quadrupled her income or anything, but um, that was pretty amazing for her, and that's something that she never thought possible, never mind in the space of eight weeks. And another one that was quite funny, actually, that is the craziest success story that I've ever had in my business. She went out and tested her first landing page for her first free video training series. And she was just testing the link and it was literally up on her site for like two minutes. But in that time, somebody came to her site and signed up for her free course. So she was like, well, that course doesn't even exist yet. So she had to go back to the lady and apologize. And the lady went, well, it doesn't matter. I just, I, I know that I need uh, help and I need to talk to you. So they talked and a week later she signed a contract for several thousand euros. So, that's pretty cool stuff, and that's what I just love creating for people because financial security is so important, and um, although I'm not really that driven by money, but what I'm driven by is having choices, and that's what money can buy, and so I love creating those kind of results for people. So when it comes to joint ventures, um, I said before that I love to try new things and that I'm a bit of a pit bull when it comes to things that don't work. And we put together this event, which, you know, it is a little bit crazy to put together a 600 euro event when you're in a market that doesn't know you at all. Like, we have never, ever hosted any live event, not for an hour, not, not an afternoon event, nothing. And we decided that 
this year we're going to put up this two-day event in Cologne and it's 600 euros. And I don't know if you've ever tried to fill a room, but that is one of the hardest things to do in marketing. And, you know, we were quite impressed with ourselves because in the first six to seven weeks we sold 10 tickets, but the event is coming up and we still need to sell another 40. So um, I got really frustrated and I just, you know, I'd done all this hard work with the landing page and the Facebook ads and all that and it wasn't really working. So um, I started to work with a guy who is an expert in Facebook ads and he referred me to an article and that talked about this viral contest. And of course, you know, being who I am, I bought the software straight up and I put together this contest. So this is what I'd love everyone to help me with and it's really easy, uh, it'll take one minute um, and it's basically just going to that contest and what you can win is you can win a ticket to our event in Cologne but if you don't want that or you can't make it or you're not in German or whatever, um, you can turn that into three coaching hours with me and that could be German or English. So three marketing coaching sessions with me is what you can win. And the contest is fun really because you have to ask her a really, really hard question. Um, and that's uh, a joke, but um, you have to answer this question and then um, you can share this contest with other people and if you do that, for every friend that you refer to this contest and that actually takes part, you get three extra chances to win the contest. So the more you share it, the more likely you are to win this contest. And um, even if you don't want to enter the contest, you have to have a look at this because this is a really amazing tool and we've started the contest about three hours ago. And, you know, this, I can't say it's gone viral and thousands of people have signed up and I didn't really expect that to be honest because um, it's a pretty special and niche thing that we do so you won't get like millions of people in the first three hours or anything. But we have added a hundred people to our list in the space of, well, it's a bit more than three hours now. And, you know, I think that's not so bad. So have a look at this tool, have a look at the contest, I'll share the link with you and um, yeah that would be awesome, that would really help me right now if you just shared that around a little bit and overall um, I just always, I always look for big hearted entrepreneurs who need help with their marketing. I mainly work with coaches and um, people in the service industry um, but we do work with um, product-based businesses as well. So, yeah, anybody who's an action taker and who will be teachable and, you know, try um, my way of doing marketing, um, that's the kind of people I love to work with. That's it from me. Thank you so much, Catherine. So I, I spread, I started spreading your contest today. I didn't, I didn't even, I, I slept so much today. I had a massage in the, in the lunch break and then fell asleep. But uh, when I got up, I spread it, Catherine. <laughs> and I'm Thank gonna, you. I'm gonna continue to do that. So um, you guys, you know, have a look at it. It's really cool and it's so much. It looks, it just looks so much fun. And Catherine, if you will post that link in the, um, in the Joint Venture Europe uh, group so everyone can see it, that would be awesome. And I'm sure that's cool. what you meant. You were going to do. Thank you so much. I'm going to put you on mute here. Um, I'm so excited, guys, because um, you know it's been two monthly webinars now, and we've had six amazing women to um, come and speak and have that conversation that uh, Catherine's talking about, and it just makes my heart swell up um, that we have this quality and caliber of, of people in our group. And thank you guys so much for, for presenting tonight. That was really interesting and um, I'm sure that you guys are going to get um, some other people in the group who really want to speak with you um, for a flirt. So we don't want to, uh, I will, well, I would like to be respectful of the time, so I'm just going to uh, whiz through JV School here, and I hope that it's not too fast for you, but we want to be sure that everyone can uh, get off the call um, in about yeah, 10 minutes at the latest. So guys, I wanted to, tonight on JV School, just share some ideas with you. And maybe you've already had these ideas, and maybe you haven't. Um, last week we talked, or the last month we talked about the difference between JV partnerships versus affiliate marketing. And so I wanted tonight to just give some examples of some things that I 
um, see going on in the marketplace. And the number one thing is the most simplest form of joint venturing, which is just to feature each other in your weekly or monthly e-newsletter, or e-sign as you call it, um, as a really simple way of getting started um, after maybe a flirt that you've had with someone and maybe you don't have a product or an event where you need to fill seats yet. Maybe you're not at that stage, but you'd still like to cooperate. So maybe that would be a good idea, just featuring each other in your, in your e-sign. Another thing you can do if you're just starting out and you haven't quite gotten to that phase where you have products but you might be offering perhaps um, private coaching and things of that nature, you might be interested in holding an interview with your joint venture partner or interviewing each other so that two interviews are created and then sharing that with your, with your tribe. Um, the same is true for an idea of holding a, a webinar together. Um, where you are both promoting it to your list and each, um, you know, growing your list that way by, by promoting the webinar to each other's list. That's one of the easiest things to do. Um, another thing that I see happening, especially in the U.S. market right now, and something that I was speaking uh, today with someone about, um, is that you can give your product or your service as a bonus with your partner's offer. So let's just take um, the example with Olga. She's got an online program um, that she's promoting right now, and Heather is um, giving away one um, piece of content that has to do with her subject matter. So it's a, it's a bonus content that's added onto Olga's content, and that way Olga has the benefit of having new content that she otherwise wouldn't have had it, and Heather gets exposure to a new list of people who possibly need um, global English training. Um, so that's a, that's a really good idea, and I was talking about this today with Marit Alka because she's got some things um, in her program that I don't have, but it would be a great add-on for my clients. So we were kind of talking back and forth, like how can we, um, I give her a product or service as a bonus for her program, is she for mine? Another thing you can do is you can co-create a product or a service. Um, this is something that I'm doing with Karen Best uh, for um, January 2015. We're creating a, a new online training together, which we'll be promoting together and delivering together. So that's another idea for a joint venture partnership. And obviously the thing that um, we were talking about um, today is like just promoting your JV partner's uh, offer for a commission, which more goes in the direction of affiliate marketing, but um, yeah, it's a simple thing that you can do. Any questions around that before I go on to, to the big fish? So any, any questions around these ideas? Or do you have another idea you'd like to add? Go ahead and put that in the questions box or, or let us know that. All right, no questions around that. All right, so I had the question when I was trying to think, you know, what am I going to talk about today in JV school? And I posted on our Facebook group and I asked, you know, what do you guys want to know? And Mary Claire came back and said, you know, she's been flirting with the idea of getting noticed by a bigger fish in her marketplace. She wants to play bigger. So what does that mean? You know, you might be wanting to approach someone where their list is larger than yours, maybe even much, much bigger, and you feel like they're the big fish and you're the little fish and what can you do? So I wanted to share a resource with you that's going around right now and you guys may have seen it if you are subscribed to a couple of resources uh, like other coaches in the U.S. It's from Milana Lashinsky and her partner and it's called uh, the jvinsiderscircle.com forward slash free report. And I downloaded this report probably, I think it was the beginning of this year um, when they did it the first time around, and I, I found it really, um, really useful. Um, it was kind of in a language that didn't appeal to me too much. I don't like like some of the ways they, they yeah, frame, frame things, but in general, um, there are 12 things that you, if you do them, that that larger JV partners won't promote you, so the, the big fish won't take notice of you. So what I wanted to do tonight was just take three of the points, and the re the other twelve, or the other nine, sorry, you can you can have a look at that in the report if you download that. So the number one thing why they won't promote you is if they don't know you, right? So if um, you're new to the market and you're not as visible. Um, as you'd like to be or not visible enough for them to have taken notice of you, then you need to get their attention, right? This is like with anybody who you want to get to know, um, you need to cultivate, to, to start cultivating a relationship, you need to get noticed by them. So in the report, there are some ideas um, that you can do that. So I'm going to tell you um, three or four of those. So one way is to interact with them on their blog or via social media. 
So like have a look at what they're doing and start commenting on their stuff as a great way to get noticed. And obviously you want those comments to be um, of value and, and add uh, value to the conversation that they've already got going on. Another thing that you might consider is buying their product or getting on their program and taking part as a participant. Um, I, I did this whenever I was considering working with Nicola Bird. Like I, I felt she was doing and I really wanted to learn from her, um, but I wasn't ready to invest for her, you know, her uh, high level coaching program at that time. I just wanted to find a way to work with her. So I first bought her product, got on her program and really just started trying to shine within that program and show up that she would take notice of me. And I also did the next tip with her, which I'm going to tell you, which is attend a live event where they are speaking. Um, you know, we live in a virtual world and um, sometimes it's just good to show up face to face and that's what I did as well. So like, all right, after I took her course, I went to a speech she was holding in London. I stayed after, um, tried to get her attention by talking to her. We ended up um, working together. She, you know, I was working eight months in her business, uh, learning all the, the, the back end of what it takes to have, you know, a, a multi-million dollar business online for coaches. And she ended up being my VIP coach. And so that, that through taking part in her course and going to her speeches and kind of stalking her a little bit <laughs> in, a, in a positive way, right? But just getting her attention. And another way you can get someone's attention so they can start to know you where they didn't before is you can just have someone who um, does know them a, a mutual contact um, to introduce you. Um, that can open a lot of doors and um, a lot of you know, people are willing, willing to do that. So another reason why they won't promote you as a big fish and you're a little fish is if they don't trust you. And this is a really um, a good point I thought that they made in the report, which is you guys know how it is. If you're doing an online business, if you um, have an online course that you're promoting, you've got a sign-up process, you might have a commission. Um, so what if the sign-up process doesn't work or the commission gets miscalculated? Or what if your you know, webinar or teleclass bridge line isn't reliable? Um, there's just a lot of things that can happen um, during a launch. And if someone doesn't trust you or doesn't know you enough to trust you, uh, they, they need to know, hey, if I'm promoting this to my list of people that I've built up over years and put my, you know, sweat, tears, blood, and love into it, they want, they want to be able to trust you that you're going to be, um, you know, minimizing these, these risks and um, showing up in a big way and really um, delivering that what you say you're going to deliver. So that leads back again to they can't trust you if they don't know you. So it's all about um, nurturing relationships, fostering relationships, growing relationships, which is what we're here all about in, in JV Europe, is just, you know, how can you start getting to know someone? And if, um, you know, you're, you're with someone for the first time, they're a big fish, um, they may force you if they see you've already got a conversation going on, you've built a community around what you're doing, and you've got social proof reassuring them that you're trustworthy. So that during a, you know you're building a relationship, you can lead them to that community to have a look back. And also, what you need to do is while you're building the relationship with them, build trust by demonstrating um, that you are there. You, when, you, when you have a meeting with them, show up punctually. Um, if you say you're going to um, send them some information afterwards, send them that information afterwards. Do do what you say you're going to do. Show up 150% and um, help them to trust you um, while you're building that relationship. So that's tip number two. Another reason why a large fish won't promote you as a small fish is, this, is that maybe when you're approaching them, you're making it all about you and not about them. And this is, um, this is true in any case. It doesn't matter if you're approaching you know, your potential client or a JV partner. Um, you know, make it about them and not about you. So that, what does that mean? It means if, if when you're approaching them, ask yourself, like, how is the thing that I'm suggesting to them how is the partnership idea that I have of helping them to grow their visibility? How together, they're, they're going to be so much more uh, likely um, to, to have a conversation with you and perhaps do a joint venture with you. So 
you know, ask yourself, what can you offer in return? And, and, and don't underestimate your ability to, to return value. I mean, it may not be a huge list that you're coming with, but it can be maybe something creative that um, if you take some time to sit down and speak with someone about it, brainstorm around it, you can find something to have a mutually beneficial relationship. So it's about creating that win-win. It's about asking them, how can I support you, right? So those are just three, three tips um, that are in the report. Go ahead and have a look at that download. It. I highly recommend it and see what the other nine uh, tips are. Print that out for yourself and you know, look at it again and again when you are thinking about how to approach that big fish. Okay, so we are at the end of our webinar, the end of JV School. Anybody have any questions around um, you know, anything anybody said tonight or um, around the JV uh, School? And just go ahead and uh, write that question in the questions box or raise your hand, and I'll be happy to answer that for you. And if you don't have any questions and you're ready to go, then I wish you a, a wonderful night. Um, it is already 5 after 9, or at least here in Europe, um, and not so late in the U.S. Have a great evening or a great rest of the day. And for those people who are new, please feel free to stay, and I'm going to explain the uh, concept of Joint Venture Europe. Thank you to our speakers tonight, to our flirt, to our um, to Louisa for letting us know what her pitch was. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, guys. All right. So I'm going to go on over to the new area. So here we go, guys. So I learned this concept when I was in Weight Watchers. I was telling um, the, everyone that last the last webinar, and we I would go to the meetings, and they would do a class, and at the end, they would let you know what this group is all about, right? So that the people who already knew what it was about didn't uh, get bothered with that. So if you're new here, um, let me let you know what Joint Venture Europe is all about. It's about finding partners who, um, when you cooperate with them, strategically, um, that you will be able to move forward in your business, reach more people, grow your business. And the whole basis behind Joint Venture Europe is building lasting relationships. So here we're not up just about um, quick and dirty. No, we want to we wanna build organic relationships that last for years, right? Um, that, that makes sense to the people who are here. And it is about growing your list and your business together. Because like Catherine uh, said so well tonight, you know, you, you need a sustainable business. Um, and if you don't have a, a way to make a sustainable business, you're going to get frustrated really quickly. In the worst case scenario, you're going to run out of resources um, and out of desire to continue on. And then you're going to disappear from the marketplace. And that would be far too much of a shame because you need to be out there sharing your purpose and your talents with the world. So this group is business oriented, um, but also mission oriented because you know you have to have a good business to, to fulfill your mission. We are all about being authentic go-givers. So what does that mean? It means um, you love your clients. You love the people that you serve deeply from your heart and you are willing to put yourself out there with your marketing and show yourself completely authentically and can have those authentic conversations with the world. Be, be visible and show up. And you're also willing, you're in this group, uh, not only to take advantage of the opportunity to present yourself and, and make connections, but you are willing to give authentically. You're willing to talk about your successes, but you're also willing to talk about your vulnerabilities. Because as we know, a lot of times um, in this world we're out there you know, showing our our polished side. That's what we do in, in marketing. We want to we want to attract our clients that way. Um, but in this group, we want to be able to um, yeah be also vulnerable with each other, be real with each other, and always um, always do joint venture partnerships that are in service to our clients. Never do anything out of integrity to our clients. So those are our values. And um, for many of you who have um, been watching other people are doing um, affiliate-wise, marketing-wise, or joint venture-wise in, in the U.S. or in the Anglo-Saxon uh, space, you know, it might not have gelled with you on a lot of levels. And we are searching here in this group to find sort of the European way. We recognize in this group that there is a different culture here in Europe, um, where we're maybe not quite as loud, not quite as brash, not co quite as American joyful, and whatever, whatever it is, and, and salesy, um, we're looking for the European way, and we're trying to discover it together here in this group, so that we can show up in the marketplace that's uh, culture appropriate. So how does this um, work, this concept work with Joint Venture Europe? Well, it's pretty simple. We have three steps. 
Number one, you've already taken the plunge tonight. If you're here and new, you've attended the monthly webinars, which take place um, the first Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. Central European time, at least through the end of this year, 2014. I don't know what the, what the dates and days will be in 2015, because we're in the pilot phase and we're, gonna, we're testing this time frame. But that's step one. Step two is, as soon as you get off of the uh, webinar, the idea is to go into our group, uh, Facebook group uh, for Joint Venture Europe and to go fishing. So, for example, tonight, if you have resonated with anything that Louisa or Olga or Catherine was saying, you might find you want to have a conversation with them and see if the relationship um, could be a perfect match for future joint venture ideas. So you would contact them on the Facebook group, for example, and say, hey, I want you to be my uh, my date for this month. You only need one date, and you should only have one date uh, this month. But some people do, too. I've, I've been seeing some people are going going double. They're kind of kind of cheating on each other. No, no, they, they, just, they just get excited and want to meet more than one person in that month. So once you found someone to date um, in the Facebook group, then you're going to have virtual coffee dates with them. And how that looks, we're going to have a talk about that in a second. So again, the monthly webinars, go fishing in the Facebook group. This is what it looks like. Um, and then the virtual coffee dates. So the virtual coffee dates look like this. Um, because we are going toward um, people really getting to know each other, we're spreading the dates out over the month. In, um, so we're saying have three dates. In the first one, take just 15 minutes with a coffee in hand, um, jump on Skype and have a little conversation and see if you're a match. You know, just kind of test the waters and have a brief conversation. Maybe a week later, you might want to have then a 30-minute date with that person. And this time, you want each person to have the opportunity for 15 minutes to talk about their target group and their business details. And you want to start to kind of uh, get a feeling for, are we falling in love, right? Because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the perfect match. Then about a week later, or the latest two weeks later, you want to meet back up for that third date, another 30 minutes. And you want to go a little deeper. And you want to talk about your future goals and the challenges you're facing. This is all about that um, sharing your successes, but also your vulnerabilities. At the end of that third date, you want to ask yourself the question, um, do we want to go further? Is this, is this, does this have um, potential to become a long-term a long relationship, yes or no? So we thought about, like, OK, well, if it's a yes, it's kind of easy to, to move forward, right? Because both people are excited and are euphoric, and they're like, yeah, let's do this together. But what happens if it's a potential no? That could get, obviously, uncomfortable. Um, if you really like someone and you, you thought they were a nice person, but you don't feel like it's a potential um, JV match. So what we want you to do is we want both of you, after the third date, to sleep on it at night and just send each other an email a couple of days later and let them down easily if it's not the right match for you or say yes, yes, yes if it's the right thing, um, but don't take it personally either way. There's always a chance in the next month to find your perfect match if it didn't happen this month because you do it every month, which is a great thing. So the goal is um, to have one dating cycle with one person per month. So in a year's time, hopefully you've met um, 12 amazing women. Right now we have mostly women in the group, but maybe some men will be getting on board soon. Um, and you know, I think within 12 people, you're going to at least find a minimum of one or two people um, who you're going to have a joint venture cooperation possibility with. My experience from the last um, two months is that the opposite is true. People, people find more um, than, than that already within just this short period of time. And as I mentioned before, it's not about forcing a relationship or you know going forward in, in a, in a you know, gallop. It's about just building a long-term relationship, letting it happen organically, so that after the date, you know, we're not prescribing anything that needs to happen. It just, it just goes how it goes from there, and you, you'll see what feels right. And so we'll the partner that you've got on board. So what else can you do on Facebook? Well, on Facebook, you can also, um, you know, share your ideas for a joint ventureship, a joint venture partnership that you have. Um, you can um, reach out here for you know your virtual dates. As I said, you can also share resources, tips. You can ask questions all around joint venturing. Uh, you can ask people to like your Facebook page. Suzanne and I are coming up right now with a concept um, how we want to use the days of the week um, for to give you guys some impulse to how you can help each other on the social media platforms. Like, for example, today is the day we're going to like each other's um, Facebook pages, and this is the day we're going to go to each other's blogs and um, write some great comments and things like that. So we're working on that, and we're um, going to let you guys know as soon as we have it. Also, um, and 
finally, if you want to be featured with your joint venture idea in JV Europe on the monthly webinar, please just send me um, a private message or a private message to Susanna Rohr. And also, if you would like to flirt with the group, you would like to present yourself, uh, who you are, what you do, who you target with your business, and what joint venture partners you're looking for, also PM me a private message to myself or to Susanna Rohr and let us know that you would like to do that. We do have uh, one slot open in October still um, for someone for a flirt and um, also for the pitch, so please feel happy to be happy, feel free to do that. <laughs> that's how to get featured. And that's it. Right now, um, our only online uh, website is our Facebook group. We haven't, um, you know, branched out to another website. We may not even have to do that. We're, we're observing it as we go. But um, when we, if we do decide to do that, we're going to have the address www.jointventureeurope.org, and that's also uh, being re rerouted right now to the Facebook group. So, anybody here who's new and have some questions, go ahead and uh, write those questions in the questions box or just raise your hand and I will turn on the uh, microphone and let you have a speak. Okay. All right. So, it seems to be pretty clear. All right. So then we will just say goodbye, good evening. Thank you so much for coming tonight. So glad to have you on board. And I hope you'll find your way really quickly as a new person into the group. Sehr gerne, Dorothea. I said something German. You're very welcome. <laughs> good night, everybody. I'm turning off the recording and closing down the webinar. See you next month and on the Facebook group between